The day my restaurant burned down, I had roughly around $300 in a business account. Now you may be wondering, how did you go from having 500,000 to invest in a business to ending with about $300? Well, that's what I'm gonna be covering with you here in this video. Again, if this is your first time to the channel, consider subscribing and also let us know in the comments what you like to know from this channel. We bring you anything from Amazon FBA, which is you know uh, uh, what I personally do and how I actually was able to get out of debt and get to where I am today. But most importantly, we also cover things about entrepreneurship, mistakes to avoid, because I see that there are a lot of people out there that simply go into you know entrepreneurship or wanting more in life. And that's what I realized over the years is that regardless whether if you go to school, the traditional route, or if you tried entrepreneurship or whatever the case may be, it's because you want better skills in life, because you want more in life, right? And that's the reason why Unfortunately, many people, <clears throat> excuse me, get scammed and fall into the the guru promise of you know overnight success because many people have had terrible lives, you know, and and they've just had you know devastating experiences in life. And then when you see someone running around in a Lamborghini online and promising you the world, and you only can you know you only need to put in two hours of work and five hundred dollars. Is just like, well, okay, let me go for it, you know? So they, they pretty much prey on, on your devastating experiences. And I don't want you to be one of them. I want you to tell, you know, I want to tell you the exact truth. I want to tell you exactly how it is, what to expect. And I'm not trying to sell you here on BJK University, which if you want to learn about Amazon, it's the largest and best platform to learn from. But I just want you to, you know, to kind of, re I want to help you remove those blinders off your eyes and so that you can see what is out there because I've gone through it, I've been scammed, I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I don't want you to go through it as well. So let's go back a little bit about, you know, seven years ago into actually, right now it's eight years, uh, 2013, maybe even 2012, well, actually, let's go to 2011. Um, it was about five years after we migrated into the USA, and, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I just always wanted to do something. My, my mom had sold me on the idea that I needed to become a doctor and I went to, you know, um, I started studying biochem and I just realized that it wasn't for me. So in 2011, um, I simply, uh, uh, um, you know, me and my family bought our first business in America five years after migrating to America because we migrated to the U.S. in 06, 06, 06 with nothing, you know, in our pockets. And in those four or five years, um, we simply just, you know, worked our butt off trying to, uh, uh, to make it. And then we had some money. We bought our first local pizzeria. It was, uh, you know, I think we bought it for like $100,000. And then we worked, me and my brother and my parents, seven days a week, open close every single day for the next two years. And that was in 2011. Well, 2012 came around and I wanted to do something more. I wanted to expand. I wanted more in life always. But my brother, had, you know, was calling the shots in the business. And my plan was, hey, let's buy multiple pizza restaurants and then let's kind of convert them. Let's like take ideas from all of them. Let's bunch them together, create our own franchise business. And then let's kind of relaunch and then start bringing in franchisees and then just kind of expand this brand, kind of like Pizza Hut and Domino's and all those other uh, brands. And, you know, while I was thinking let's buy a new store every two, three, four months, his thing was let's buy a new store every year or two years. And we just couldn't see eye to eye, so I did, just decided to do something else. Now, at the time, my father, remember, was very wealthy in Iraq in the 80s and 90s. But the last 10 years before the war, he simply lost everything because of the prosecution from the government. And they kind of took away everything from him. So when we left Iraq, we didn't have any money. But after the war in Iraq and after we migrated, my dad was able to get some of his properties back. And he was able to sell them and make a few hundred thousand dollars from that. So in 2013 or so, he wired about $200,000 into my account. And he said, look, if you want to go become a doctor, great, go spend it on school. If you want to go and become an entrepreneur, great, go buy your own business, right? So I realized, okay, the, the restaurant business is not going to get anywhere. Let me go and do something on my own. So I went and bought a restaurant for $200,000. And then over the next three years, we invested nearly $500,000 in that business from because it was a dive rundown uh, uh, dive bar, right? From uh, remodel to just losses because I didn't know what the hell I was doing to, you know, I didn't know accounting. I didn't know budgeting. I still remember when we were about to remodel about six, seven months after we took over the restaurant, uh, my architect came to me and said, what is your budget? I'm like, what is that? 
And she's like to me, you don't know what a budget is? I'm like, no. What, what, can I see your P&Ls? I'm like, what's a P&L? What's, you know, what are all these terms? I had never ran a, a professional business before. I had never done those things. You know, in our pizza restaurant, it was, you know, pen and paper and just kind of like the, 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 the good old school of like, this is how much we did this month. These are our expenses. This is what's left. It was a family business. It was just between us. I didn't really have any employees, none of that, right? It was my brother, me, my mom, my dad, and we had one, one employee, which was my brother's best friend. We were paying uh, $1,500 or $2,000 a month for, it, right? That's it. So now I was introduced to this business that I had nothing, I knew nothing about, right? And now I needed to learn all those things, but it was like I got shoved into the fire and then now all these things are happening so fast around me that I don't even know what's going on. And in order for me to keep the business afloat, I needed to keep investing in the business, right? And that's when I would go to dad. Dad, I need money. I need 20,000, I need 50,000. And over the course of the next three years, we invested another two, $300,000 in that business, right? And then the last year of business was around 2015. For about six months, I had not paid insurance. For a bar and restaurant, you need to have a $2 million coverage. You need to have all these things. Our bill for insurance was $1,250 per month. I was like, well, I've been in business for two and a half years. We had another business before. Nothing happened. What's the worst can happen? I'll take this $1,200 and I'll go pay some food purveyors. I'll go make sure my employees get paid on time, which they never did. Checks were getting bounced all the time. Not because I was a bad person, not because I was not hardworking. I was working 120 hours every single week for three years straight. When we did the remodel, me, my cousin, and my brother did the remodel. I learned how to frame walls. I learned how to lay tile. I learned how to fix bathrooms. I learned how to pretty much do anything and everything. I learned how to lay slabs. I learned how to do everything because I had to. Because if I had gone and gotten a professional construction company, first of all, the building was very old and we couldn't even get permits. So we kind of used to do everything overnight because if we got permits, we needed to fix all these other things that would have cost another half a million dollars. And secondly, I couldn't even afford them. So I was stuck. I can't run the business the way it is because it's a rundown place that has this bad reputation for the last half a decade. And then if I remodel it professionally, I can't afford it. So I just had to do what I had to do. Oh, I was in survival mode, right? And so I learned all those things because I had to. But going back and thinking about that experience, it made me who I am today. I know oftentimes in entrepreneurship, in life, we try to avoid as many mistakes as possible. But it's not about avoiding the mistakes that's going to get you to where you need to go. It's about trusting yourself that even if you made a mistake, that you're going to fix it. And unfortunately, people usually do not accomplish anything great in life because they're so afraid of avoiding making mistakes that they don't even do the thing to begin with because they don't trust that they will actually make it work. Today at BJK University, we make mistakes every single day, but I trust my team and my team trusts me. And we know that we've never done this before. We've never scaled a, a company this big before. We've never ran a company like in this size before. And we know that we are making mistakes and we're okay with that. But the reason why the, 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 the team trusts me and I trust the team because we all know that we have each other's backs. And as long as we, can pivot and always correct the mistakes immediately, recognize them immediately and, and say, okay, I made a mistake. This is it. Find a solution. A long time ago, a, a mentor of mine said, do not be, a, be, be obsessed over creating ideas, be obsessed over solving solutions. And that's the thing. We all have a million ideas that we think about all the time, all the time. And the issue is, we think about an idea and bam, we react to it without any thinking time. Find a problem and solve it. The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution, the more money you'll make in your life, right? So going back to the story here, April 28th or 25th, 28th, 2015, the restaurant catches on fire. Five minutes after I leave, 5 p.m., I went on a date, it was a Wednesday, <clears throat> with my girlfriend at the time who's not my wife, I get a call from the bartender named John. Boss, the kitchen was on fire. Put it out, we've got extinguishers. I actually had extinguishers because I had to. Otherwise, they probably would have been expired. Boss, it's really big. The kitchen is on fire. The, 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 the fire department is here. By the time I drive back, I walk into the kitchen and the kitchen is destroyed. You've probably seen pictures of them in the, uh, on the internet somewhere. And that's when I realized I was in true trouble, right? 
And for the next two, three weeks, I had employees coming at me. Literally, I was afraid for my life because these people came and depended on, their, on the business to operate every single day because they were living paycheck to paycheck. And even that I couldn't afford, you know, offer them, right? Because oftentimes the checks would bounce and I wouldn't have enough money in the bank to pay them. And for the next two, three, four weeks, I, I needed to pay them and I went and sold different things just to make sure that I paid them. After having invested half a million dollars, I couldn't even pay the employees for the last two weeks that they had worked when the restaurant burned down. And that's why I went and started working for Uber. That's why I went and I started uh, um, dishwashing and, and working at hotels just so that I can at least just pay the employees. And then I had bigger debt that I had to worry about, over 150000 because I paid, you know, I owed money to the IRS. I owed money to, uh, um, you know, to food purveyors that I had bought food and, and liquor and all that in bulk and, and just did not pay because I couldn't and all that stuff. But that all was simply because of a couple of things. Number one, the money that my father gave me, I did not earn. It was my father's hard work the years before that. So although I didn't take that money and go and party, and I was the hardest working in the man in the, in the room, but I did not invest to learn in myself first. My thing was, I was going after the shiny object, walls, color paintings, paintings on the walls, cooler looking chairs, instead where I should have focused on making sure that the food is good, making sure that it comes out in a, in a, in a, a great time. If you came for lunch for a burger, it would take 45 minutes to cook a burger and get it out of the kitchen. Where really at a good restaurant, you know, restaurant and bar, not like a sit down fancy restaurant, but restaurant and bar, a burger should not take more than 10, 12 minutes. 15 minutes, it's running late, right? Especially if you're coming for lunch because you've got one hour lunch. Probably travel 10 minutes, you gotta travel back 10 minutes, you gotta use the restroom, that's 30 minutes gone. If you're gonna wait for 15, by the time you get your check and sit down and all that, you're barely, you know, you're barely gonna make it, right? So those were the things that I should have focused on, but that was because I was ignorant because I did not have knowledge and because I was not aware to go out there and get the knowledge first and because my ego was huge. I had been watching John Taffer from Bar Rescue and Gordon Ramsay from Hell's Kitchen for about six months prior to that and I felt like an expert. And unfortunately, I see this happen so many times with entrepren entrepreneurs or wannapreneurs that I call them in today's uh, uh, world. Well, YouTube is great. Well, the information is freely, you know, available everywhere. And after binge watching a couple of gurus' uh, YouTube channels, you feel like you're an expert at something. And then boom, let me go do it. But you see, what experience does is it's not only helps you avoid mistakes, but it shrinks your time to success, right? So for me, had I first gone and brought a consultant that knew how to run restaurants or make restaurants profitable, had I brought in a partner that had ran a restaurant before, someone that was a manager at a restaurant before, that managed the restaurant, hey, you've got experience in managing restaurants, I've got a quarter million dollars, let's put those two together, I'll give you 30% or 25%, no salary, or maybe $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, just so that you can pay your basic needs. But once you can say, make at least that in the business, then your base salary goes away and then it's just 25%. You've got 25% in the business. If it goes down to trash, you lost, but you lost your time, I lost a quarter million dollars. He teaches me or she teaches me and then we grow the business together. That, if I had to go back, that would be the way that I would do it. And for many of you guys watching right now that are interested in selling on Amazon but got zero in your bank account, you're like, well, this sounds great, but I need $10,000 to launch an Amazon business with BJK University. Where the hell do I get that money? Well, in this channel, I've actually launched a video. I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I talk about exactly all that. But I'll, I'm gonna spend the next two minutes explaining to you exactly how and where to get that money from. But before I do, if this is your first time to the channel, smash thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And below this video, there is a short presentation that walks you through how BJK University can hold your hand through the entire process should you want to learn from us. So let's go into how and where to get that money from. You see, just like 10, almost 10 years ago, I was an, an investor or uh, 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 someone with a quarter million dollars. People like me 10 years ago are available everywhere. And managers that know how to manage restaurants are also available everywhere. And that could be you. 
Say you have been following me for six months and you know how to sell on Amazon. Maybe you joined BJK University because you had a few thousand dollars saved or maybe you know, you've been watching our YouTube channel or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you just know about BJK University and you've done the math and you said, okay, $10,000 is the number. And instead of you stressing over, well, I don't have $10,000. Well, I live in a third world country. $10,000 is a lot of money. Trust me, there are people in your country, I don't care where you are, that have $10,000 that would love to invest it in a business that can generate them an ROI instead of it just sitting in a wall somewhere. So go out there and find that person and sell them the idea of, look, here is this business. I will do the legwork. Let's go 50-50. Even if they only gave you 30%. Now you've got 30% of something and instead of you sitting and watching me every single week and bitching about having 100% of nothing, right? So that's very simple and very easy. And some of you might say, but how is someone going to trust me? How is this going to happen? This is not, this is all your limiting beliefs. It's all here. It all starts with your mindset. This is all the garbage that has been implanted in your head in the last decades of your life, how you were raised because our family taught us that way. And it's not just you, it's me as well. Everybody was taught that way. Money doesn't grow on trees, right? A penny earned is a penny or a penny saved is a penny earned. All that bullshit that we've been raised with. But do understand, there is no lack of money. Amazon generates over $600 million either in a minute or an hour. But even if it was in an hour, just imagine how much money that is, $600 million. And you're trying to tell me you cannot find $10,000? Two people, three people. I don't care where you, where you live. You can find that money. But it's about, there was actually a quote from Rich Dad Poor Dad. He said, never say I can't afford it. Always say, how can I afford it? You see what that does? When you say I can't do something, that's it, it stops. I can't bench 300 pounds. Okay, I can't bench 300 pounds right now. But how can I bench 300 pounds? And now when I'm gonna start thinking, okay, I need to train, I train this much, I need to train this much. I need to eat like that, I need to do this. Where if I just said I can't, it's done. It's done, I move on. So what you do is I can't is the easy way out. It's the comfort zone that's speaking. It's that person in the back of our head that doesn't like challenge, that's telling us don't do it, don't do it. It's too much, too much work, don't do it. But instead, you should be looking for challenges. The reason why I moved from San Diego, California to Miami, Florida, cross country to a city that I know nothing about was because of challenge, was because of putting myself out of, getting myself out of my comfort zone, putting myself in a place where I know nothing about. And trust me, the first week I was sick. I just wanted to go home. I felt so sad, but it took my business from seven to eight figures inside of one year. In fact, in like eight to nine months. Why? Because I focused, because now I had nothing else to do but that, and I just kept on going hard and going hard, and now I don't even want to go back home for the holidays, right? But that's because I put myself out there. I accept the challenge, because I know in challenge, in the, in the cha with challenge, everything grows. In the comfort zone, nothing grows, right? So you just have to ask yourself, what is it? What is my max potential? Am I operating at my max potential? Can I grow by 10%? If you just focus on growing by 10% every single month, in a year, you would have grown 120%. So if you're making $3,000 a month right now, you'll be making more than double. If you're making $10,000 right now, you'll be making more than double. If you're making $1,000 right now, you'll be making more than double. And then the next year. So even if you're making 1,000, next year you'll be making two. The year after, you'll be making four. The year after that, you'll be making eight, and then 16. And you see how it compounds? As it grows, the double is so much larger. That's only by focusing at growing by 10% every single month. That's all. But outside of that, guys, hope this video found you well. If you want to learn from BJK University, please check out the video or the link below this video. Um, aside from that, be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to, to smash the thumbs up button because it truly helps us rank in the algorithm. I will see you in the next video. Take care.